On this episode of the Mariah Report, we are getting ready for Mariah to perform at Global Citizens. Mariah is out in the streets. Her YouTube page is active. And we're catching up with all the Butterfly 25 celebrations. All that and more coming right up. Hey, welcome back. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. And it's been such a hectic week. There's so much going on in the world of Mariah, but also out in the streets. I feel like we're actually coming to the end of the pandemic because Dan, you and I went to a real life event. Oh, we did. Socialize. Oh my God, with other lambs. I know. Oh yes, girl, we're getting back into these streets. This past weekend. So the DJ Rose God is a great new up and coming DJ. She's pretty popular on social media and I've seen videos of her parties. They they all look amazing whenever I've seen them online. So she was performing here in LA at the Peppermint Lounge. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go check it out. So I went with uh, my friend Walker, friend of the show, Walker. And you came along too, Dan. Yes, I was able to make it there just in time. Surprise appearance. A little late, a little late. end, but it was fantastic. Yes, and Amorphous. And Amorphous was there Amorphous too. was there. He did the new uh, Butterfly remix. Right, he debuted he it. Also, yeah. First live performance of that. Or yeah. live playing, I guess. Mm-hmm. Public <laughs> playing of it. Uh, so it was so much fun. It was so much fun to be around Lambs, Mariah fans again. Uh, again, my first time since the pandemic doing a Mariah event. And uh, LA event. Right. That was our first time doing that because normally we have been in New York. Exactly. So it was good times, good times. And it was lovely meeting all the Lamely out there. Yes. Loved it. Loved it. Shout out to everyone who went to that party. I know. Rose God, fantastic DJ. Set list was perfect. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I now have scientific evidence that Obsessed is loved by the straights. It's oh, really? Straight, it's a phenomenon. You saw it in real life with my own eyeballs. Oh, wow. Let me tell okay. you what happened. What happened? So before Rose God, got on at the at this club and it was an amazing club because really cute super cute super cute but the, what was different about it was it wasn't just like a regular nightclub you know four walls and a ceiling everything it was beautifully designed but the ceiling and floors and all the paneling on the walls was um soundproofing so it was oh. like being in the studio oh. so you could hear the music perfectly is that right? Yeah. So a lot of those songs I was, that she played, she opened with charm bracelet, like some charm bracelet stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, opened with subtle invitation. I'm hearing it for the first time really loud and clear. Yeah. When was the last time you heard subtle invitation in the club? Never. 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it was amazing. Like so, so, it was so much fun to actually listen to the music too. Yes, absolutely. It was definitely good times. Uh, so anyway, so before she got on, there was actually another event. So some band was playing in the venue. Oh. And so there was leftover people hanging out. Ah. They had already been drinking and hanging out. And they didn't want to leave. They didn't know that Mariah was about to exactly. overtake the place. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, you know, like cool people, whatever. They were there for the rock band beforehand. And so they were just hanging out. Uh, Rose God got on and started um, doing her thing. Uh, and then I want to say like five or six songs in, she starts playing I Know What You Want. So now, mm-hmm. now the mm-hmm. leftover straight people are getting into it because it was early, still early. I got, I got there really early. Uh, so the lambs were yet to fully arrive. Uh huh. You know what I mean? And take over. Uh, so we still had our leftover crowd. But they're getting into it. They're jamming out. And then I'm telling you, when Obsessed came on, they went berserk. Really? Hands in the air and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Knew all the lyrics. Yes. Yes. It did. Singing along. It, it, I, now there's proof. Okay. It's not just us saying it. Well, I believe it. I believe it. I think I believed it ever since the iHeartRadio performance. Oh, yeah. Where people are like in the audience going crazy for it. I yes. was like, what? That is so strange. <laughs> it's I mean, fun- don't get me wrong. I love it. I love it too. But... No, we're jamming out, but it's a yeah. phenomenon. Yes. It's good. I. It's good. It's good to have that in her repertoire. Right. So she can always pull it out. Sort of like... I mean, I don't know. Mariah's set lists are always like thing, but like if you're like a comedic or comic, a stand-up comic, mm-hmm. and you like see that the crowd isn't like down for what you're telling them, you can always switch up the joke and be like, well, this one, yes. I can always get the the general public with this one. I can always get the gays with this one or the straights or, you know, whatever. Exactly. So it's it's always good to have that sort of in your back pocket. Anyway, so that was a fun little thing. But yes, absolutely. And speaking of fun little things, if you are going to the Global Citizen Fest, there's an after party in New York. Yes, at Next the Door. Spot. It's called The Spot. It's next door to Rise Bar on 9th Avenue and 56. 57? 7, 6, 9th Avenue. I can't Avenue. remember anymore. I know. <laughs> uh, but Mariah Friendly Place. And so their sister bar, which is right next door to it, 
the spot is having uh, an unofficial after party from Global Citizens. So make your way from the park over to Ninth Avenue. Yes, it's very close to Central Park. It's right there, you're right walkable. There. Just walk, walk, walk right over and, you know, meet, greet, and mingle with the lambs. It's always a fun time, too. Always a good time. So if you're in the area, we will not be there, but y'all should definitely go. Yes. It'll be fun. Yes, yes, now, yes. Now, this episode, we have so much to talk about, mm -hmm. but we might have to sort of like you know, go through it really quickly because there's so much. We can always circle back. We can always circle back. Yeah. There, she gave us so much this week. We went weeks and weeks without it. Yes. That without any information. So now it's like, okay, now we're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. We are going to catch everybody up on things, but we're going to keep this short because after this, we are doing for our Patreon subscribers, a Hot Ones challenge. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. And uh, I'm scared. I don't know how far I'm going to make it. Can I uh, stop eating the hot wings if I want? But then I win. Okay, girl, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that is fine with me because <laughs> competition, I care less. <laughs> I care less. But we're going to continue the Mariah conversation while burning our mouths. Yes. Yeah, so if there's well. anything that we did not sort of hit here, we'll be discussing it while we... Um, are doing the hot wings over there. Yeah. And so. we're remixing it a little bit. It's technically going to be a hot nugget challenge. Yeah, chicken nuggets, girl. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to do the whole wings. The whole wings no, situation. because it's like too much and then the bones. Bones. Like, girl, please. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's keep it easy. Keep it simple. Yeah. Um, so that's a lot of, going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you subscribe to our Patreon page. Link is in the description. It's five bucks a month. Cancel anytime. And it supports this show, keeps it running. And we appreciate all the support. Yes, absolutely. You see us do crazy things over there and talk crazy things too. Yes. Um, okay, so let's get into it. There's a lot that is coming up still. Right. So Global Citizens Fest is this week. So we'll be reporting on that next week. But there's also all kinds of other things happening. There's a music video with Brandy coming for the, the roof. Do you think it's going to be different from Masterclass? No. Just chopped up Masterclass yeah. footage? And that's perfectly fine with me. But we might get Butterfly Lounge. We might get some more things that we haven't seen. Mm. We might get more, like, you know, shots and things. Mm. Which, speaking of the Butterfly Lounge, we were asking last week, where is it? We sort of learned a mm. little bit more about it. We did. So we she did. did film a bunch of stuff. She's just not sure how she's using it. So thanks, Mariah, for letting us know. Right. But also, don't overthink <laughs> it. Just upload. We'll, we'll skim if we have to. Well, you know, we'll we'll talk a little bit about it later, but in the Rolling Stone interview, which was an hour, almost two hours long, mm -hmm. she talks about it and what okay. she wants to do with it. So stuff like that. So now we have a better understanding and we know it's coming. Right. Yes. 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 Absolutely. So that's that's festive. Um, so look out for that this weekend. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, there's also new merch coming tied into the Back to the Global Citizens. Oh, that's there's right. A, like a Original T-shirt, I guess. Yes, it's a Caution T-shirt. Mm -hmm. It's super cute. It's right. the cover of Caution. I sort of want it, but I haven't purchased anything because, like, the merch situation is another situation. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. Uh, and then also, like, big news that came. I guess came out of the Rolling Stone um, article, but and we knew this. She's talking about someone's ugly daughter coming out again. Mm hmm. Now, we've been on Someone's Ugly Daughter for two years now. Since the book. Yeah. But now it's been getting so much press this week because of that Rolling Stone interview. Like, mm -hmm. the, I guess it's a podcast. It is a podcast because mm -hmm. that's how I listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she went a little bit more in depth there. And then all the news outlets started picking it up. So it's all over the timelines, all over. Everybody's reporting on it. And people are really excited for it. Like the general public. Yeah. You know, like the people who love Obsessed yes, want Mariah's alternative album. They do. That's <laughs> that's the crowd. They're into that. Um, so I think we're going to get that coming up, hopefully within the next few months. Well, here's the thing. Based on all this press that came off it, now's the time. I know. Now. I don't know if she's ready, though, because she said she's doing something with another artist involved with it or okay. something. What do you think that is? Well, I think it's Millie Bobby Brown. Okay, I think it is, too. Because what's she doing looking around? Why is she always lurking around? You know? That's what I'm talking about. How do you feel about that? I don't know anything about Millie Bobby Brown. That's a lot of words to say. I'm only but... interested in the Mariah original vocals. If Marie Millie Bobby Brown was to do her version of Chick, I... do it over there. Yeah, I didn't even know she was a singer. She's a singer. Mm -hmm. You got me, girl. I don't know nothing about her. I don't know nothing about her. I know she's a young, a very lovely young woman. That's it. Over <laughs> there on Netflix. Yeah. But okay, here, here, this idea. 
what about like Mariah releases this Someone's Ugly Daughter with her lead vocals, but Millie Bobby Brown is doing the music videos for it. Cause you need a music video. Mariah's not gonna do a music video for it. So Millie Bobby Brown will be the lead in Actress the video. Yeah. Lip syncing to Mariah? Yeah, why not? I don't know her lip sync ability. I'm just saying, what else could she be doing? I don't know. I don't know either. That's what there's so that's where I want her. I want her over there in the music video. So Mariah ain't gotta worry about the visuals mm. and just put her over there. Let's circle back. Let's keep okay. an eyeball on this. Yes. Well, we will. We have to report. We have to report. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that uh, looks like it's got uh, traction happening. And Mariah has said that she has her vocals just working on it. So, you know, there's steam, steam behind it. Yes, there absolutely is. Um, okay. So we have a lot going on. Speaking of Millie Bobby Brown, though, mm. she was in Mariah's, though this is so crazy. She was in Mariah's Instagram story. Yeah. TikTok moment. They were right. like recreating the, um, the honey intro. Yeah. Girl, tell me why I'm sitting here doing my work. You know, I got the, the local news on the television. And sure enough, they're reporting on Mariah's 25th anniversary of Butterfly. On the news? On the news. The oh, local news. No way. Yes. So she's getting all kinds of track. Girl, when good. Mariah's on the local news, yeah. you know something good is coming. And they were talking, they were showing that particular clip of Mariah and Billy Bob Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. Billy, yeah. Billy, 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 whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That girl. And so I was like, oh, this, oh, okay. All right. All right, for the general public. Actually, I was watching ABC News, the live stream, and they had a full ad campaign for Global Citizen, and Mariah's on the, in the ad. Oh, okay, good. So double news action. Oh, she's getting she's getting picked up. And then we got a lot of the Billy on the Street action happening because oh, Bros right. is coming out. Oh, that's right. And yes. he's going around doing promo for Bros and talking about Mariah. I saw him on The View. Yeah, I saw that too. Mm -hmm. he's Super on, cute. He's on all the socials doing all kinds of things for press. Mentioning Mariah, because Mariah's music is in the movie. Name dropping Mariah every chance he gets. That's a lot of Mariah and I going absolutely on. Absolutely love it. Yeah. <laughs> but they did have a New York City premiere and Mariah did not attend, but she's busy. She did she that already, thing already. She did that thing over there, yeah. over there before. So she it's did. fine. But mm -hmm. I was just thinking like maybe she would appear. But honey, she's busy. We're in the midst of Butterfly 25. Yeah. She's doing this, that, and the other. That's why she did it back then in right. July. Mm -hmm. no, she was I like, get I'm it. gonna be busy. I get it. I get it. She's busy. <laughs> Uh, anyways, a lot of Mariah action just in the general public. I know. And I love it. Um, I love seeing just randomly people talking about Mariah, even like the generals. Yes. Super, super good. Um, okay. So other butterfly things that have been going on. Mm -hmm. We got a bunch. Should we go into YouTube? Let's do the YouTube section. Yes. Because last <laughs> week I was talking about how I read, like she called it a butterfly or a honey music video documentary, okay? Yeah, when I hear documentary, I'm thinking 40 but minutes. I'm thinking 20 minutes minimum. Right. Minimum. Yeah. Now, I'm not mad that it was only five minutes. I feel, I, <laughs> and then, when I saw the time, I was annoyed. I was like, well, this can't be it. There's obviously an extended club remix somewhere. Yes, yes. <laughs> but by the end of the five minutes, I was satisfied. Oh, very satisfied. <laughs> yeah, didn't need any more. But I want, I mean, it just goes to show like how much footage they have. And I mean, I have to, I just have to say they used so many clips of the actual music video. Mm. I wish they would not have because we got five minutes. Every clip in there should be a behind the scenes we've never seen before. Okay. So our That's... brains are in the same place. Because <laughs> okay. as I was watching it, I was thinking, okay, I need like the lamb extended mix. Just letting those, like, those behind the scenes run. Uh-huh. No yes. need to chop it up and edit. Uh, yes. Just let it go. I mean, I did like that they did like side by sides. Those were like cute. that was cute. Yes. But we've all seen the video. Like, don't give me a video of the video I've already seen. But that's just times. nitpicking. That is absolutely nitpicking. Don't yeah. pay any attention to me. <laughs> no, but now we know that there is more footage. Oh, yeah. And more scenes mm -hmm. we didn't see. Oh, my gosh. Like how the bat, the Tom fake Tommy and the other guy was like, on the boat. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Was that scene with them confronting the sailors? Oh, yes. All that behind yeah, the scenes and Mariah existed. dancing. Yes. All, oh, my God. That different angle. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And the natural color of it all. Right. That's what really blew me because I was like, oh, girl. Yes. This is gorgeous. Uh -huh. When at the very end, when she's in the in the like the sh at the shore. Yes. All that green. In the natural tones. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Stunning. I know. Gorgeous. It was all good. Every shot. Did you know that story about Serge getting his leg squished? No, I had no idea. Right. 
So, well, I'm glad he stayed because that hair was everything, girl. That was good hair. That was good we needed hair. hair moments. Oh, my God. So that was fabulous. And Mariah looked gorgeous in her little, where she's like current day speaking about it. Yes. I think she was like on her rooftop. It was. And I was like, girl, she's sickening. She figured out she can work from home now. (laughs) (laughs) She absolutely can. I'm telling you, she looked stunning. I loved every moment of it. Um, And it was all great. It was all great. I know. I loved it. Yeah. Um, I didn't see the after party thing that happened. I did not either. Because that was for YouTube premium members. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know what that was. I was like, well, someone's gonna post it, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then no one posted it. Yeah. Um, but word on the street is it broke down two minutes in. Oh, really? That's what I heard. Girl, I don't, I don't know. know what an after party is supposed to be like. I don't know either. Okay. Because I have seen like random clips of the documentary that wasn't in the five minute one. Yeah, like with her hair blowing. Yeah, all that kind of like stuff. Like that? Yeah. That's it? So it broke down. That's what I heard. Okay. All right. But I loved it, and I need one for all the videos now. That's what I'm saying. Where's the breakdown behind the scenes? We're not calling these documentaries. Let's just... Yeah. Let's. It's a behind the scenes. Yeah. It's a reminiscing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want one for every music video. I know they got tons of footage of Butterfly. I know they do. I know they got tons of footage of all of them. The Roof, Breakdown, I don't tons. Think they realize the content they could be uploading. Just yeah. don't... No talking, just... Play the role. Yeah, exactly. Like, together. I specifically remember when Mariah did the Oprah Winfrey show for Butterfly, where she's saying honey, mm-hmm. or wait, she's saying uh, Butterfly and Hero. Yeah. Um, they showed a video clip of the Butterfly music video, like right before the break or like right after the break coming back into the show. Or maybe it was just during the commercial break. I don't remember. It's 25 minutes ago. Um. <laughs> But I remember them showing a clip of the music video, which was not released yet. And there's a footage of Mariah running through the the forest. And the dress that she has on has a slit all the way up to the hip. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't appear. You don't see that slit in the final edited version. So I'm like, I know they got different angles. I know Ah. they got that slit. Uh I know they got it, girl. You mean in the 90s? In the 90, yes. Same 90. When she's running. Different angle. Different angle. Really? From a different side. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So I was like, well, where's that? I was like, well, I didn't see all that leg. Where'd all that leg go? I was expecting the leg. It's in the vault. So it's all those things that we know they have. So hopefully maybe we'll get like another little yeah. behind the scenes. Listen, the people want content. Just give it to us. Yeah, especially from Butterfly. Right. Oh, my God. That's sort of the good stuff happens. Sort of like for like the, all those new photos that came out. Yes. Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. The one with the with all the hair. Well, they all have all the hair. <laughs> but the one, I guess. It's like more like you see more of a chiseled jawline. I, and there's like a lot of hair covering it. Whole head. I can't remember, but they're both gorgeous. It's the one that normally is in like the brown tone. Right. Not the one that they used. It's not that one photo shoot that they used for the rarities. I know. It's the other one where the hair is like sort of straight, but sort of curly, but sort of messy. Yeah. I love that photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And we got a new couple outtakes of that one. And I was like, oh, stunning. Right. Gorgeous. It's good stuff. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Beauty. Oh, I'm totally back into Butterfly, by the way. All the way. It worked. <laughs> All the way. It totally worked. The whole era. Exactly. Everything she was doing. Yeah. Everything. And we'll talk about it again a little later, but in that Rolling Stones interview, she was bringing up the Tabitha Soren interview. Oh, she and did? I was, and she was like, oh, I was re-watching that recently. And I was like, girl, did, did you listen? <laughs> <laughs> so she, she watches it too. She watches it too. <laughs> she watches it too. Okay, good to know. <laughs> So interesting. So interesting. Um, We are going to take a quick splash break. And then I think we're going to come back because there's a lot more to talk about. There's more YouTube moments. Mm -hmm. The Mariah Report is supported by podcastcbd.com. Use the promo code REPORT 
to get 10% off of any purchase and free shipping on orders over $50. Dan, I'm so excited to bring this product to our listeners because it's something that I've been taking for a while now and at podcastcbd.com. You can get something called wild gummies. They come in the raspberry flavor. They are delicious. Now I've been hearing everybody in the streets talk about CBD this, CBD that, and I have no idea what CBD is. Think of it as a natural compound or even as a supplement that you add to your health regimen. So CBD is something that your body makes naturally. Your brain makes it, especially after you exercise. And so taking a gummy uh, gives your body a boost. And I actually used to be a skeptic until I realized that I was doing it completely wrong. Well, how, what were you doing wrong? How are you supposed to do it right? So when I first tried it, I was just taking like one dose. I wasn't even measuring how much I was taking. I just tried it and hoped for the best and really nothing really happened at all. I didn't feel anything, didn't do anything. So I just thought it was bogus. However, somebody explained to me that what you need to do is measure how much you're taking. So for example, the gummies, the wild gummies, they are 25 milligrams a piece. And then so you know the, know the dose and then you take it daily to get the benefits. And what are the benefits of these CBD gummies? So the main one for me is that I used to have horrible sleep issues. I couldn't get to sleep, couldn't stay asleep. I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I wasn't falling asleep until 2 a.m. It wasn't good. So I started taking these to help with that. And I found it really did help me fall asleep earlier. And I was able to stay asleep and I was waking up refreshed as well. That was the main benefit of it. And I also found it really helped with my anxiety that I had. It's brought me back from anxiety attack several times. It kind of just takes the edge off it. Again, nat completely natural. And then the shocking thing that happened was it really cleared up a lot of my joint pain after a couple of weeks. Uh -huh. And unlike taking a Tylenol or something like that, that just covers up the pain and temporarily relieves it, it actually got rid of the inflammation in, in my joints. Well, these benefits sound real yummy to me, so I might not need to go get some of these gummies. Yeah, so make sure you head over to podcastcbd.com, use the promo code REPORT to support this podcast, the Mariah Report, and get yourself some premium lab-tested hemp CBD products. Okay. All right. The festivities continue. It, absolutely. And you know where they're all continuing? YouTube. On the YouTube. That's where it's at. <laughs> YouTube is where it's at right now. Absolutely. So we have gotten a bunch of new little things. She put that behind the scenes honey documentary. Mm -hmm. She put the Jamie Theeks in. And what I've been waiting for for so long. Finally, we've all been waiting mm. for this. Honey at Top of the Pops. HD'd up. Oh, my God. Oh, do you remember how we were talking about how the uh, music videos are re-released? Right. I think what happened was last during the rarity era, they were HD'd, but now they're 4K'd. Oh, right. Okay. Even more HD'd. There you go. I think that's what's up. That's what's happening. Not that my blind eyes can tell the difference, but like, okay, that makes sense. You know? So she did do something. I think so. <laughs> she did 4K it. Yes. Before it was HD. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. But we have the HD version of Top of the Pops. I know, and it's so good. Mm -hmm. Vocally amazing. Yes, live, live. You, live, live. Yeah. Dancing galore. Yep. Good and flat I, ironed hair. Oh, my God. I feel like she was giving us the Honey Remix moment. She was. Which also, I want to see a behind the scenes of that as well. That one, too. Because those looks. Those look good looks. Gorgeous. Yeah. In that little tube of water running, whatever. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. Christopher Buckle did the makeup yeah. for the first time. Mm -hmm. Remember, he just told us that. And they throw some of that footage in there too, girl. Right. I love the remix video. Mm -hmm. Up on, she was up on the thing. The, sitting on the lap? Yes, sitting on the lap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like Honey Top of the Pops was very much like the day before, the day after. Like mm -hmm. she was still in that same look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was busy. She was busy. It's good. It's one of the best ones. It really is gorgeous. I tussle between that, but my ultimate winner, which didn't get any attention, is Honey from Around the World. Butterfly Tour. From, from Hawaii. Oh, the Hawaii Around the World in particular. I That's mean, my favorite live version. Really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I love it. I love the look. I love the hair. Yes, the hair. I do good. love. The big hair. She is doing the dance. She's doing the dance. She has a little mini skirt. Uh -huh, she has her uh -huh. like Hawaiian lay on. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That's my fave. 
Yeah. I remember when they played that on MTV back in the day where you didn't see any of the tour footage oh. to me, it was like, uh, Oh my God. <laughs> I was gagged. Uh -huh. um, That's my fave. So I would say that was probably my first honey performance I've ever seen was that one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Even before around the world. Cause MTV played it. Cause they did, um, they, they went behind the scenes of Mariah's show in mm. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Well, all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they showed it at the end. Love it. Back to YouTube. Yes. So this morning I finally got around to the Carrie Washington show. Uh-huh. Now I didn't know she had a show. I didn't know either, but it was really cute. It was adorable. The set is beautiful. Yes. I love her little set. Um, it reminds me of when she was doing that with Tina Fey. Yes. For Mean Girls. It was. In the New York City closet. Exactly. Okay. With your expert eyeballs, uh -huh. what timeline do you think that was recorded? Because okay. I feel like it was done earlier. I think that is an earlier thing as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like, like summerish. Definitely during the summer. Early summer. Yes. Yes. Right? That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. But, but like, it was good. Before she went to Italy. No, after she did after she came back from Italy. Oh no, I'm thinking like big energy era. Early, early. Early, early. Well, wasn't she in Atlanta for most of that time? She could have zipped up. I mean, she could have. I, I think it's right when she came back and didn't want to go back to Atlanta. Okay, maybe. That's what I would say. But I feel like she has a better system set up. Oh, for sure. Uh -huh. I think everyone has a better system set up. They figured it out. Now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, the Carrie okay. Washington, okay, so Carrie Washington, as soon as I started watching this, I was like, this is what the Meghan Markle podcast should have been. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Mariah and Carrie Washington are, are friendly they like, are. in real life. So oh, right. they automatically have um, better chemistry chemistry i mm -hmm. suppose so like they were easily able to do that um but it was all good talk really good and i also feel like again we all we didn't learn much new from that interview but it was just good to see and again for the general public i was gonna say for the joe schmoes the carrie washington fans mm -hmm. to hang out with mariah a little bit they get to see another viewpoint of her right and so for that fact I think it was amazing. Yeah. So the show is called The Street You Grew Up On. Mm -hmm. And I guess the focus is like going back in time and just kind of reminiscing on wherever you grew up and how that shaped you. Um, so they got into that yeah, conversation. And again, they mentioned it a couple of times during the show. Mariah doesn't have a really a street she grew up on. So she really is sort of connecting to all those other people who didn't really grow up on a street, mm -hmm. like myself, for instance, mm. where most people are like, oh, yeah, I grew up on this street for the first, you know, 20 years of my life mm -hmm. like as most people mariah didn't have that mm. so and there's a lot of people who don't mm -hmm. girl we were moving every year really oh every year oh wow every year yeah so i get that it's like girl i don't i don't have like people ask me where i'm from south side of chicago girl uh -huh. just just anywhere the anywhere down there <laughs> <laughs> uh but it was a cute conversation i thought like uh the great flow and chemistry between them like mm -hmm. we mentioned it was a good watch. I totally enjoyed it. Yes. And absolutely loved, loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Loved it. So check it out. Yeah. On the YouTube. While you're over there looking up Mariah stuff. <laughs> the street you grew up on. Yes. I might have to check out some of those other episodes. I want to see who else she's talking about. I know. With. It was good. Yeah. She's a good interviewer, Carrie yeah. Washington. She's good. But again, she's in the industry. So it's like Mariah will be like, yeah, absolutely. I can, I can definitely get down with Carrie. Do you know in New York, this is so random. My roommate in New York. From, yeah. She was Carrie Washington's assistant. Get him. Like 10 years ago, though. Really? Yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Yeah. Good for her. <laughs> Any stories? Not really, no. But we would always, um, like, dog sit her dog. Like, oh, really? You no, know, yeah. Or a little, like, a little white dog of she some sort. She seems lovely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my roommate was like, she is lovely. She gives her gifts all the time. She was never like, you know, you hear all the assistant stories of like, oh, this celebrity was like the most horrible person to work for. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely lovely. Fine. Oh, wow. Typical. Okay, good. Yeah. I like that. Oh, yes. We love hearing good things about the people. Well, actually, after watching the Carrie interview, I was thinking, oh, she would be, she can be on the friend list of Mariah. Oh, definitely. Because well, we picked is. Mariah's friends <laughs> right here. But, uh, you know, you got to like check out, you got to make sure everyone's legit around Mariah. That is true. So that she's is true. A, I would like it if she was around. Um, yes. Okay. So now we have other things, other things so much. 
Yes. So Mariah's out here in the streets. Yay. Love it. I told you, Mariah just has to walk around. We got a show. We're entertained. <laughs> we got an hour worth of talk. Yeah. If she steps outside of her house, which she did step outside of her house. I'm not sure where she was going, but she was draped in a Louis Vuitton like blanket or something. Yeah. She had a wet red dress and high heels. Have and you noticed you, the high heels are back? Yes. The high, high ones. Mm -hmm. Girl, she's, she's serving. Mm -hmm. She's giving it to us. Yeah. I don't know where she was going or what she was doing, but she looked done up. She looked good. So it was something. Uh -huh. But then we have like the major like night out on the town where she did the Chopard unveiling of the jewelry line. Right. Now that that's happened, I'm realizing, oh, I think there's actually just one of each piece of the major ones. Oh, really? Uh-huh. I think there's like two collections. Yeah, but I think there's like one of those, those big butterfly pieces. I think oh, there's, think just, there's one just one of those. one of them. Yes. Why do you think that? Because they looked hella expensive. Well, the rain, the line ranges from eleven thousand to twenty three thousand. Oh, that's actually reasonable. That's very reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought it would be in the hundreds of thousands. Exactly, that's what I thought as well. Oh. But I did some digging. Okay, you it's, found it. I did. Well, I mean, Ish, I think the my my sources are okay. I mean, they didn't come from Chopard, but I think they came from like, I don't know, one of the major magazines, like so many, again, so many outlets were writing up on it, mm -hmm. um, but they did say it ranges up to 23, like 23, six. Not bad. And that's probably the butterfly necklace, which is the, the most expensive. One. Yeah. So. Okay. Very reasonable. That's very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so she went out, she did the unveiling of all that kind of stuff. And she was wearing this gorgeous black gown. Uh, how do you pronounce the name of uh, a scapper, scapper, scaparelli? Oh, I forgot. Scaparelli. But I would gown. want to point out a little bit out of the box for her. Yes. Because that big gold lip mm -hmm. adornment that turned into a necklace. Yes. I was like, oh, this is not unusual for Mariah. But it looks great. It looks amazing. I loved yeah. it. I loved it. I love sophisticated glam Mariah. And also the makeup and the whole look was one of those where I'm going, what the hell? Like, <laughs> how did she do that? How did she look so darn good? I know, I know. Oh my God. No, she looked beautiful that night. Amazing. I mean, and then afterwards she gave, there were like little clips of her. She had like a cape on. Mm -hmm. It was all cute. Loved it. Great looks. Very Super Meghan Markle at the, at yes. the Queens. <laughs> Very that. Super high spiky heel. Uh-huh. Yeah. She are... looked great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. We only got a couple pictures from the event, like official pictures, but yeah. they were all good. Really, really good. She looked loved like she was it. having a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody was loved out it, and about. Loved it. Um, okay. What else do we have? A couple more things. Yeah. We have things like the Rolling Stone interview and the Twitter spaces. We're going to have to circle back to these because there's a lot to unpack. I'm exactly. actually saving the Rolling Stone interview. Yes. Now I did, I, I do want to say, um, I listened to the whole thing, girl. It's a long listen, but it's good. Um, you can, I think you can tell that they recorded it in two separate sessions because oh. like, I listened to the audio closely. Oh, oh, oh. Um, but Mariah was very with it. I mean, she was answering freely and very comfortably, which mm -hmm. I love. Like the uh, Questlove? Very, yes, very much like that. And the guy who was doing the interviewing, I don't know who he is, the regular host of that show. Um, he knew what he was talking about. Mm. I, like he knew like everything from the songs to, you know, the situations, the social medias, he really did his homework or he's a lamb. Mm. So mm -hmm. good, good on that. But I also wanted to say that I believe it was speaking of Mariah friends. Mm. Um, it was Lee Daniels who got her that house in Atlanta is what she said. Got her the house. Got her that house. Like found that house for her oh. in Atlanta, which was then robbed, which uh -huh. is now being oh, back robbed. on sale. So it's like, you did her dirty. Why'd you get her that house? The robbable house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was another interesting, there are tiny little tidbits all throughout there, but she does talk about, um, you know, working with Walter A, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. She goes deep into like the lyrics of Honey mm -hmm. and the concept. Like she was going pretty deep. So it's definitely a good listen. But we're going to save the majority of that for another time because we got we got to go through. Well, I think because of that Rolling Stone interview, too, it, that also picked up a lot of press right. from that conversation. So it was definitely worthwhile. Yes. Just like for press wise. So Mariah's getting all kinds of things. Uh-huh. 
Love it. Yes. Um, and then I think it was after the show part event, the, the very next morning or next day or something, where Mariah got on a Twitter spaces. Right. Talking to the fans. Randomly. Right. Girl, now there was, it was a very well organized Twitter spaces. Because the complaint is it then usually not organized. Exactly. <laughs> and people chaos. talking over or interrupting and things like that. So it was very well organized. I love that. And um, lots of great talk. Mm -hmm. They talked about random things, um, but one of the moments that I think I really enjoyed was just hearing Mariah talk about, well, apparently, allegedly, this is what happened. Mariah was up early that morning, and she said to her friend, I want to talk to the Lamely. How can I do it? Hmm. So she went around and gathered up people, and they did a quick Twitter space. So it was very, like, spur of the moment. But Mariah was in her lamb fields. Oh, she yeah, was like, I saw yes, those clips. Yes, yes, and she was like, oh, and she was talking about the Lamely and how you she got a little choked up. I saw that, uh, heard that clip. Uh huh. Girl, oh, she almost got a tear out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like those tiny little moments. But again, that was a lot of information. I'm sure a lot of you guys have listened to all of that stuff. And it's a lot to go through. Yes. When we got all these other things. There's time to go through. This is like, this is a whole episode is just mentions. We didn't even mention. <laughs> mentioning moments. We didn't even mention the actual album. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> With those new remixes. Yes, and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah. last week when we did the show, we had not listened to we're it yet. Still waiting. We were yeah. still waiting. Um, but mainly, we basically heard everything before, except yeah. for those two new remixes. Uh -huh. So what did you think of the remixes? I thought they were good. I thought they were great. Yes, I thought the Butterfly one is great by mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh Sounds really modern, sounded good. Yes. So you know normally we don't love a not resung remix? Typically, no. But I was into this. This one does work very well. And in the club, it was really good, too. Absolutely. When I heard it loud. I just love the beat for it. Yeah. Like, it's very sort of almost like house, yet trance. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I'm, I'm, it's the beat it's for good. me. It's, good. it's the beat for me. Yes. So that's my favorite yeah. part. I still haven't studied the Morales Honey one the way I want to, but people are loving that, too. People are loving that. Yes. It's the same vocals we've, we've had before. Same thing with Butterfly. Nothing new. But... For David Morales, I love it, sure. Mm -hmm. But I prefer the other ones. Mm -hmm. But that Butterfly remix, mm -hmm. love. Am I crazy or is like the album a little bit different? Like she tweaked it a little bit. Like how so? Like I could swear the beginning of Breakdown is a little bit, there's like a few more beats in there. Oh. In like the opening part. See, well, here's, seconds. Here's, the, here's the thing. Or I'm I... just hearing it better. It could be, it could be, there could be a thing here. I've only been, I haven't been listening to the 25th anniversary edition. I've only been listening to the bonus tracks ah. because now when I'm listening to Butterfly, I'm listening to the Dolby Atmos version, which is separate. The 25, oh. the 25 is not in Dolby At Atmos. Oh, that's so, why I was trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Cause I almost went to go buy it. I was like, it just says like, digitally mm -hmm. mastered or something yes yes so there's two it's the it's the old version because i'm i don't think they were probably able to get those new bonus tracks dolby atmos ah if that makes sense i don't know so I, there are two versions interesting so pay close attention well i need to do a deep <laughs> study yes because when i because i was playing the 25th uh edition anniversary edition and the transition from the song before it, I'm forgetting what the song was. Fourth of July. Fourth of July into Breakdown. I was like, wait, that sounded different to me. It could be. It could be because there was also something in the Rolling Stone interview that, again, there was so much information coming at me. I couldn't take it all in. Mm. But I feel like some with some of the acapella versions, she was like, oh, yeah, for the 25th edition, we like added in or or kept just my background vocals oh. or something like that. And I was like, girl, I don't have time to rewind. <laughs> so I have to, I was like, oh, so I think maybe she did tweak a couple things. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she did. Yeah, I need to do a so, proper comparison. Yeah, there's a lot going on out there yeah. in Mariah world. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. Tons. Tons and tons and tons. And we have more coming up next week. So. I know. Well, it worked. I'm back into Butterfly. And that's all it is. Not that's, that I wasn't not cool. into it, but... <laughs> Um, okay, so we have to wrap up this show, but thanks for listening. Sorry it was such a, a, a snippets. Well, we've been bombarded, so we'll slowly break it down as yes, the time ticks. Exactly. And then next week, we're going to be talking about the Global Citizen concert, and, her and, first live performance yep. since the pandemic. Three years. Three years, yeah. It's going to be wild. I know, right? In Central Park. I know. Fun times. It's going to be good. 
And don't forget, join us over at the Patreon. There's bonus content. There's tons of stuff. It's, think of it like a, a blog with a paywall. So as soon as you sign up, you support the show, this show, but then also you get tons of content that you can go through, um, exclusive content there. And we're going to be uploading shortly our hot ones challenge where we're going to be tasting all these different hot sauces mm -mm -mm. because we met our Patreon goals. And so we promise. And here we go. We'll we're going to be talking Mariah, goes. of course, during <laughs> during this. Uh, so go check it out. The link is in the description below. Yes. And of course, if you are watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. Yeah. Share it with your friends. Comment. We love a comment. Interact. Yes, please. We want to hear from you. All of that. All those things. All right. Thanks for joining and we'll see you soon. Bye. The Mariah Report is produced and edited by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Hosted by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Graphics created by Sean Mark. Theme music created by e Reezy Beats. Thank you to the listeners who support the show on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support or for more information, visit the show notes in your podcast app.